You've been sort of like a, a mystery in the comedy world uh, because the only image of you people could maybe Google stock was Is some weirdo. Video? Was that video? Yeah. And then your <laughs> your Twitter profile picture. Yeah, um, I, I was meeting some of you guys behind Chicago Ideas Week today, and no one really knew anything about me, which is cool that you invited me here. Mm. Could have really been anybody. Yeah. Um, it's a real you dark lady. Up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I started writing on Twitter about two and a half years ago. I was just, I just graduated and had a dream like you were describing and uh, was just doing it for fun and was able to parlay that into a professional career. And were you I, paying rent? Oh, mm, depends on the month. Okay, um, okay. I had, a, I had a few fun little odd jobs. When I first moved to LA, um, I'm from LA. Uh, I, I was a nanny uh, and I got to drive around kids. No, were you writing jokes as you were nannying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I was tutoring uh, and just uh, a, a few random things to pay my rent sometimes, mm. but was doing this Twitter stuff and was meeting comedians and writers. I was very lucky and I still every day am just very thankful that I got to do this. So before you got on Twitter being funny, who was high school Megan like? What was? Oh, what was awful. I mean, awful, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, were you a funny I, person in high school? No, I was not. I, it's kind of a running joke in my family that I didn't make a joke until I was like 18 or 19 years old. I was very nerdy, very large girl. And uh, my twin brother was, is still a really funny guy. He's a total class clown. And he's gonna be a doctor. He's in medical school right now. So <laughs> did a little jokey joke flip flop there. Yeah, and, sort of um, like, uh, what was that, uh, the parents, right? What was that where they switched bodies? The parent trap. No, no, what was the movie no, where they switched uh, bodies? The change Freaky up? Friday. No, oh, Freaky yeah, Friday. Yeah. yeah. You and your brother did a Freaky Friday. I went Friday for the movie. change up, okay. which I think came out this year. The worst I didn't movie see ever it. made. Might be the worst. The trailer was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Tra trailer was nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I was I was like very nerdy. And I it, it's funny, I, I find um, and kind of the talk we saw right before, jokes and great jokes, ones that I can only wish that I would make someday, um, are just very intellectual and very thought out uh, and very precise. So I do think that like there is a clan of, of people who come from this like nerdy background. Um, but yeah, in college I sort of realized that this was a thing that I love to do and that it was the only thing I felt like I really could do. Um, so it was easy for me to decide to move to LA with nothing. So give me an example of some funny tweets that start revving up the sort of the, the buzz of who you were. Of my tweets? Yeah. I mean, because you just can't like say like, oh, why did the chicken cross the world tweet and then get a job writing for the Academy Awards? You got to, you know, it has to build up. It has to have a, a number of retweets and, you know, it has to get buzzy. How, yeah. how did it start? I'm going to do that one later. Well, why does your chicken cross the road tweet? Um, I think that we have a slideshow that might have a little tweets in there. Thank you. Okay, let's see if this, let's see if I ain't got any tweets on there. Oh, oh yes. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I, I have to preface that for someone who made a career out of technology, I have almost no understanding of anything having to do with technology and just really panicked there that I don't know how to press a button, that this wasn't going to work. So I'm uh, riding high right now because the slide shows up. Um, so this is a tweet that was very popular. Uh, it has 5,000 retweets. Um, at what age does Ryan Gosling have to change his name to Ryan Goose? It sounds silly when you say it out loud. Um, I, my mom, my mom's a dear sweet lady. Uh, she reads every single tweet of mine immediately and then often calls me and tells me whether they're good or not. Um, so she, she did call me about this one. She liked it a lot. Uh, but she also likes to remind me that Sexy tweets do really well. She tells me this all the time. Sex sales. So she, af 
after this tweet, she called me and was like, Megan, she doesn't talk like that, but it's cool. Uh, she was like, Megan, uh, I think it's really smart that you made a Ryan Gosling tweet, because all the women really like Ryan Gosling right now. And I think that it was a smart marketing move. Wait a minute, so she stage momming you? <laughs> oh, she's... She stage momming you over some tweets. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, she's, she has a very good sense of humor, and she really does get it, which is why it's like halfway acceptable. And she's a great lady who birthed me, so I'll let her do it. Um, but uh, yeah, she does. There, there are a few that have been a little racy or like a little offensive for her taste, but she's pretty cool with it. But the people love it. And that's what yes, counts. Yeah. and she understands that the people come first. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, but in, in more seriousness, I think uh, what Twitter allows a, a lot of people to do, and which is really cool, is that if you can get sort of a verbal or written surprise in this like very small space, it often uh, leads to a popular or like well-received joke so, so it's, it's sort of like being a word ninja. If you can squeeze in a lot of laughs, and how many characters are the tweets? 140 or 140 less. 140 or less. If you can pull that off of like a physical, physical laugh yeah. off a little ass tweet, that's I, power. I think that is what it is, not to like make too much of Twitter. I always feel silly even talking about it. It's a silly word. But um, yeah, I th my favorite tre tw mm, tweets are ones that are able to have like an arc in, in such a short amount explain, of time. Explain that a little bit. I, I guess, um, I don't, let's see if maybe a different one. Let's go to another tweet and say, this is a good example. This is a pretty shitty flash mob. <laughs> it's in my living room. Okay. It's, That's hilarious. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's way, it's way cooler not to read them. It's like very bizarre to just reference a tweet and hear people laugh. This stand-up would be great if it was me, like Stephen Hawking-ing it, <laughs> and just like sitting here with a remote. Uh, I'm gonna try that in, I was gonna refer that's, that's to- like, uh, That's yeah. elaborate prop comedy, if you pull that off. Prop comedy is always good, and this just is the icing on the cake. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think for this, the reason it works is, well, it's not a flash mob that I'm referring to. It's referring to an intervention. Uh, but it, in, in a very short, sorry for the spoiler, um, in, in a very short span of time, you're able to like get a beginning, a middle, and an end of this sort of like micro, joke or story or whatever. And that's what like all one-liners I think are, is just like establishing an expectation like very, very early on and then immediately. Because in a way, yeah. I guess Stephen Wright was a, just a yeah. Twitter comic, but just before his fucking time. Yeah, there was there, plenty of people, like Mitch Hedberg mm -hmm. is the ultimate person in my mind who like, and a lot of people say this, if he were on Twitter, he would just, every single joke would be like the best, yeah. Um, let's do you think, like, you know, before we go to the next slide, do yeah. you think, like, because when people, when you put that slide up, people got the joke almost under five seconds. Like, it's like a quick scan, ha, 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 ha. That's one of the things that I find so satisfying about this medium for what I do is that I can see in, like, nanoseconds how many people are liking it because you can instantaneously see like who's retweeting it and sharing it with their friends and who's writing things back to you. And the immediate gratification of something like this for both the reader and the writer is just like, it is like comedy crack. It's, it's I, I have. Uh, hold on, mm -hmm. wow, you blew my mind. I mean, not that I know what crack's about, but I'm saying. <laughs> Because, I mean, crack is like, woo, then it's over. So this is sort of like, yeah, it's comedy crack. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I know a lot about crack. Yeah. <laughs> I, I OK, let's go to the next tweet. Um, I like this girl, should I? Well, I, I think I like this. Um, one thing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's funny. I'm... Well, this is also like crack. 
yeah. in the way, I don't know how it's like crack, I just wanted to bring it back to yeah. that. Um, it, it is something that I like to do and a lot of people on Twitter or in the world like to do is sort of find like, a template that exists. Like, I like this girl, but she doesn't even know I exist. That's a very common phrase uh, that, you know, you would hear in the context of a character and you would expect it. Um, but sort of putting that on another uh, known phrase or template, which is people don't know if God exists. Yeah. I don't even want to go there, but, but some on. people don't. Well, let me, let's, yeah. let's, let's break this down a little bit because do you think this almost is as funny as the word, you know, versus, I don't know if, if a stand-up comedian or I could do a skit or see a skit on SNL about this, if it would be as powerful because it's just really quick, boom. Yeah, right. I mean, that's the thing is, I do think that like, if, if you try to expand, some tweets or thoughts or whatever can be expanded into very big stories or sketches or so whatever. This could, this could turn to a crappy rom-com. That could. With, yeah. Yeah, it could. Uh, but but I, Twitter's also great because it's this very unique medium where sometimes you'll think of like wordplay. I actually think I might have a wordplay thing coming up next. Yes. That's, that's just, that is just a pun. That's just a pun I thought of in the car. And like there's nothing you can do with that. You can make like a t-shirt maybe. But, but the caps but, on the Y is the passion. <laughs> like, why? Yeah. I actually, I like, I am tortured whenever I'm writing a tweet of like where to capitalize things or where to punctuate. I'm really into like no punctuation at the end. It's this cool thing I'm doing. They call, uh, that, they call that edgy. Yeah. Yeah, that's edgy. <laughs> it's edgy. We call me edgy. Um, but yeah, it's a, it is kind of a fun, like, I'm, I also like love, poetry and like words and very like serious uh, literature. And I think that if you're a fan of like words, then Twitter's also fun because you get to like, you can play around with things on like a very small scale. So before we, we run out of time, I want to figure out, you do have a dream job now. You're writing in Parks and Rec. I do, I write for Parks how, and Rec. How is uh, the Twitter lady plopped into a sort of a <laughs> sitcom writing room? How, how are it, you? It is totally different um, in that there's so much that goes into a comedy other than just jokes. Like that is a very important skill, but you have to be, you have to be like a normal human being first. Cause that's I think, almost like to, a nine to five job. Yeah, it yeah. is. Um, and you have to, you know, there's story elements and that you have to be very quick and you have to be very good verbally, not just like being a weirdo without a shirt on, like sitting at a computer. That's Most what, of these that's had what, that's shirts how, on when I wrote these. that's how tweets are made. Yeah. Um, some of them I tweeted like in the car while I was driving, no shirt on. But most of these were like, um, but yeah, it, it is, that is a very different skill, but I am so glad that I was able to bring uh, sort of an ability to know how to make a little joke going into that. So before we let you get out of here, last words to Chicago. What do you have to say? I'm very excited to be here for the first time. Uh, Wait, this is your first time in yeah, Chicago? Yeah, it's my first time in Chicago. I'm leaving a meeting. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you to Chicago. I, I think this, this whole thing is so cool. I'm going to go to the Cheesecake Factory tomorrow. <laughs> going to get that out of the way. Um, but yeah, I, my dreams came true because of something that I never would have expected. So as corny as that sounds, it happens and it's very cool.